Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Inverted Joker and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about playing the anchor position. Now, this doesn't work as good sometimes in ranked as it does in actual competitive play, but if the teammates that you're playing with are competent and they have microphones and you guys are good at communicating and you play together all the time, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to start running anchors, especially if you're in diamond ranks. However, a lot of you guys probably already do. And before we get into the video, a lot of people have been asking to play with me. And I do want to add that my gamer tag is in the description at all times, and you can go and add me whenever you want to. However, my Mezzo Tiger account is suspended until October 10th, so I cannot play, talk, or join parties, or send messages, or do anything on that account until October 10th. So go add the two gamer tags that are down in the description box down below. So, with all of that out of the way, uh, I'm going to do something I don't do very often, and that's give you guys live examples. Well, not really live, I mean, I'm commentating over gameplay that I already got, but nonetheless, they are examples that will help you understand what I'm talking about better, and uh, yeah, you'll just get the point a lot easier. So what is an anchor? An anchor is someone that holds down a room, an objective, like an angle, denies entry to a certain place, or covers a certain angle, denies a certain angle. You get the point. So you're not really camping on the objective, but you're holding down a certain section of the room, or an adjacent room, or... You're just denying entry into a certain room. Your primary focus is to deny that entry or that angle, and you are to stay in that general area. That way, if your team needs help, they know where you are, and they can effectively call to you or someone else that is closer to them. And you can also ask for help from a roamer, ETC. The list goes on, but the point is an anchor is a very valuable aspect in competitive play, and like I said before, also in ranked play if you're up in the higher ranks. Now I did say that I would give you guys examples, and the example clip that I have is going to be on border, so it makes sense that I did a crude paint thing I got going on here, a little sketch to show you guys what I'm talking about. So the red uh, lines show where I am, and all the arrows on that red little dot thing there shows the angles and doorways and shit that I have to cover and I have to deny. And it's harder because it's 3v5 and it's a high level ranked game. So my primary functions are to deny the L at East Stairs, I'm going to deny entry into offices, and I'm going to watch through the doorway and the fountains. But the tricky part is, once again, there's only three of us, and I am anchoring in archives, so how am I going to figure out where they are? Well, our middle man there in yellow, his job is to watch, you know, um, the middle detector side. He can reach over and cover, or take over my position if I die. He has to watch... Um, in through fountain just the same way that I do and then green's sole function is to keep them off of that back wall. So apart from our designated duties, um, if one of us dies, the closest person to the last anchor that died is going to be the one to take over his spot. Now it's also important to note there is places that take priority over others. So let's say green, that is SC downs as we've indicated before. If he dies, it is yellow's job to rotate over and take up his position, which is to keep them and deny entry from that back wall. And then if yellow dies, it's my job to watch his previous angle, as well as downs if he knows, and it's only if he knows nobody's pushing that wall side. So, uh, if I die, it's yellow's job to rotate over, or you can stay there because, I mean, really, uh, that room over there is going to be easier to deny entry than the room that I'm in. However, we have three people, so we need to spread out, but it'd work a lot better if we had five. Now comes on to the point where uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to explain to you guys while I'm doing things, what I'm actually doing and what I'm thinking while I'm playing up this anchor position, as uh, here in a minute we do end up going down two versus five, uh, because Sir Mega Hawk dies, unfortunately. Okay, so the spot that I'm currently going to uh, in this clip is very, very, very obvious, and generally people do go here to hold down this room. However, my aim was kind of on point that day, so I was kind of feeling myself. I'm going to start shooting out most of this uh, brown shit here on this wall, like the little uh, wooden thing we got going on here, like the antiquing or whatever, um, just so I have a better angle on that doorway. And I can also watch the L, the North Stair L, or the East Stair L, sorry. And I know that Capital droned me, so... Once again, wouldn't have normally peaked him, but aim on point that day, so I did it. Alright, so that's Capital out of the way. I'm still going to maintain my position. However, I can hear footsteps coming from that corridor over there. So here in a second, I'm going to drop down 
and I'm going to get behind this shelf. That way I have equal cover on each side. And the only thing I have to worry about is the doorway that is behind me right now uh, from the uh, East Air L. And that does isolate um, fire from only one direction, and that would be that doorway. And then I can also, from the angle that I'm going to be moving to, watch the metal detector with Sir Mega Hawk, which was, again, indicated by the yellow box uh, that I showed you the very crude drawing of at the beginning of this video. So I uh, see this drone come in. He doesn't know that I know that he's droning, so I'm not going to shoot the drone. I'm just going to call out that there's a drone coming in. I'm going to let one of those two handle it. Alright, so I know the drone came from this way, so it's probable that this person is going to peek this corner. So I'm going to wait a second, I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm just going to get a couple of little, like, I wouldn't say cheesy, but I'm going to get a couple shots off on whoever is peeking this corner, and that's going to make them a little bit hesitant to push, push forward, and that can, uh, you know, sneak back towards the window over here uh, by the air conditioners, and I can also watch both the other angles without having to take fire from, guess who it is, and then a wild... Blackbeard appeared. I'm just going to peek him one time and come back in behind cover. That way I don't fucking die. Yeah, leaving that alone. So um, here in a second, I think I bust this window out. Yes, I did bust the window out. That way, uh, if I do get overwhelmed by Blackbeard, uh, if he starts pushing me at the same time that the other two people that I know are here, because I know that Twitch has made her way into fountains since Sir Mega Hawk called that out. And Downs knows that nobody's pushing that big wall. So you can kind of rotate over and take over Sir Megahawk's position. Of course, this whole time we are talking about what we're doing. I pop out the window, kill Blackbeard because I can hear him start to push up. And now we only have to worry about Thatcher and Twitch, which we both know that uh, Thatcher is in the hallway over here. And then we got Twitch and Fountain. So I do get like a little tiny bit of information peek just to see if I can see Twitch yet because I know she shot that wall out. And then we hear Thatcher coming up through the metal detector and at the same time SC Downs did call her out. I do an information peek on Twitch again and I shoot her through the wall. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much how the anchor position is played. Three ways, of course, like in competitive play, you're going to have anywhere between three and five anchors. However, generally you're going to have one person floating or uh, just full on fucking roaming in that fifth spot. So that pretty much covers a basic and i'm talking extremely basic uh three-man anchor on border and of course if you have five people i'd probably have a fourth man um over in security and then have a fifth man that could easily just sit back wait and take over positions as people die and kill people accordingly and as always there will be a lot of exceptions as to everything that i said in the video so kind of take uh you know, with a grain of salt, you know, the things that you think would be common sense if there was an exception to be made, kind of take those into account, you know, if something didn't pan out the way that it happened in the clip, of course, yeah, common sense dictates that something else should happen, but we did defend that objective twice, maybe three times in the process of that whole game, so we kind of knew what the other team was going to be doing, and that's another thing that you need to take into account. So guys, let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section down below. I know my mouth is a little bit dry because the medicine that I'm on dries my mouth out. No matter how much fucking water or uh, carbonated beverages that I drink, my mouth is going to be dry. And until next time, guys, my name is Inverted Joker, and I'm signing out. Hostile activity. Ops 4 last stop standing.